Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Austin. This is a yoga sequence that will focus on transitions. So transitions from yoga posture to yoga posture. And hopefully that will help benefit you in your daily life with transitions, big or small, that you may have going on off the mat. The oil, the essential oil that I recommend to do with this practice is green mandarin. And I put some suggestions below. What I would do is just take one drop Rub it between your palms and take a big breath in. So if you have your oil, please do that. If you don't, let's all come, let's all meet onto our backs for lying down. So this is our first transition. So just taking it easy. I like to lie back in Supta Baddha Konasana with blocks. You could just lie with your feet straight back. So your soles of the feet to touch and your thighs will be resting on the blocks. You can start with your palms facing up, one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart, whatever is most comfortable for you. And instead of just expecting yourself just to be all of a sudden very yogic and calm, take some deep breaths in and out through the nose. So taking the time to transition from not doing yoga to doing yoga. And just lying on your back here and really listening to the sound of your breath. I'm trying not to judge whether the breath is slow or fast. Just noticing. What is the tempo of the breath? Is it shallow? Is it deep? And with your eyes closed, if you'd like, just think about some of your daily transitions. They may or may not be stressful. So maybe it's from sleep in the morning to waking. Maybe one of your biggest transitions is going from being awake to being asleep at bedtime. Maybe another transition is being really amped up from something to coming into something like yoga and being peaceful. Coming from work to being home with your family, with your spouse, with your significant other can be a huge transition. And then maybe there's been a big transition in your life, an obvious one, like maybe a child has left the nest Maybe you've gone from single to being paired, or maybe something like a divorce or a separation is going on. Maybe you've recently become a caregiver. So any of these transitions, stressful or not, maybe you've gotten a new job or moved house. Just noticing these transitions. And many times our expectations don't meet with what we think things are going to be because we rush into certain things or we're not ready. And the biggest tool we have to working with these transitions is our breath. So again, taking a few more moments just to focus in on the breath, in and out through the nose. I'm just taking mental note to work on through this, through this yoga practice, working on your breath through the each and every transition, moment to moment. And then gently blinking your eyes open, just hug the knees into the chest. Apanasana. So one of my teachers said, the most advanced yogis are not pretzels. 
They are the yogis that consistently remember to breathe. So we're going to start here. And instead of leading with the physical body, we're going to lead with the breath. So you're going to wait for your inhale, and you're going to just press the knees a little bit away from you as you inhale. Wait for the exhale, draw the knees in. Inhale, wait for it, and then move the knees. Exhale, draw them in. Continuing with this motion, but again, noting you're waiting for the breath. So wait for the inhale before you move the knees away. Exhale. Draw them in. So just working on this a couple more times at your own pace. And especially at the beginning when you first start doing this, you may notice it's very difficult. Most of the time when we leave with our body, we rush into things. Wait for that breath. Last one. And coming into a spinal twist, so take the arms and do a T, and just scoot your hips to the right, drop the knees over to the left. Simple spinal twist. And wait for the inhale, bring the knees back up to the center. Scoot the hips to the left, wait for the exhale, drop the knees to the right. people when they get injured it's in the transitions in the yoga poses because we're in a rush or we're always thinking about the next thing so really being mindful wait for the inhale bring the knees back to the center so we're going to take that into a moving spinal twist you may need to put the palms facing down wait for the exhale drop the knees over to the left but they don't quite touch the ground when you're about an inch away come back up but wait for the inhale Wait for the exhale, drop the knees over to the right. So moving spinal twist, inhale, come back up to the center. And just moving side to side. And depending on your breath, you may be going faster or slower. Just remember to wait for the breath. So as you inhale, then the knees come up. Exhale, then they drop. Let's do one more each side. Hug the knees in once again, Apanasana. Massaging that lower back. And rocking yourself up to a seated position. Coming into Ardhamatsyandrasana. And I'm not mirroring you, so your left knee comes down, your right leg crosses over. If this is too much, you can take the right foot in front of the knee. And this is what a lot of people really rush into. So on an inhale, you're going to lift the chest up. On an exhale, wait for it. You're going to twist over to the right. And I like to take my hand behind me just to boost my spine, everything's nice and tall. If it feels good on your neck, just look over the left shoulder. Wait for the exhale and release. Let's switch sides. Right knee bends, left knee comes on top. Balancing the hips. Big inhale, wait for the exhale. Then the physical body moves with the exhale. And if you catch yourself moving before your exhale, just go back and try it again. Just like transitions, it takes practice. You're not going to become an expert at something the very first time you do it. Wait for your next exhale. 
Then release, making our way onto hands and knees for cat and cow. So this one is really good because a lot of times we just move without even thinking about it. Wait for your inhale as your heart opens, collarbones run wide. Exhale, wait for it, and then round. Inhale. And then wait for the exhale. Round. And just practice. advanced practice not because a pretzel could do it it's because it takes a lot of effort <laughs> this is not something we've been trained to do from a young age and coming into a neutral spine we'll come into some slow warming vinyasas and if you're really lucky, you have a puppy dog there to help greet you and remind you to breathe. So we're going to start with our hands and knees. And we're going to come into child's pose. So the knees wide, big toes touch. Wait for the exhale. Stretch it back. Wait for the inhale. Come back up onto hands and knees. And as you exhale, you're going to lower knees, chest, chin. Wait for the inhale. Coming through cobra. You guys still waiting for the exhale, coming back, child's pose, balasana. Wait for the inhale, come up, hands and knees. Lower once you've exhaled. Inhale through small cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Continuing this on your own. Wait for your inhale to come up on the hands and knees. Wait for your exhale. You may find that once you start moving this way, you move with more purpose. You move slower. And it really gets nice and deep into your body and your mind. Take one more wherever you are. We'll meet in child's pose. Balasana. Take time to land in your balasana. Take time to land in any yoga pose. There's no rush. Coming up onto your hands and knees. We'll come into a runner's lunge. So bring your right foot forward, back knee off the floor. Runner's lunge. And especially if you're feeling kind of tight, it's really nice. I do this almost every single day. It's really nice just to prop yourself up onto blocks. So bring the floor to you. Melt your shoulders down. Really imagine your heel lengthening back. So from here, we're going to come into right side triangle. So really take your time. So you're going to inhale and melt your chest forward. Wait for your exhale and start to come into triangle. So start to spin the back foot flat and maybe start to bring it in about a foot or so. If you have your block, maybe you bring it to the inside of the foot. If you run out of breath, take another inhale, and as you exhale, open up into triangle. Bow 
Finding a place for your left hand. That makes sense. And just like any transition in life or in yoga, it takes practice. So we'll do that a couple more times. So wait for your exhale. Come back into runner's lunge. Take your time, inhale here. Wait for your exhale, triangle pose. Two more times, inhale. Come back into that runner's lunge. Exhale, triangle pose. Inhale, runner's lunge. Exhale, triangle pose. And left hand comes down. Exhale, bring your hands down, downward facing dog. Bring that left foot forward for that runner's lunge. And now you know it's coming, but there's no rush to get into it. So really take your time warming up with the runner's lunge. Like today, my body feels super tight, so I don't want to have my hands on the floor because see how hard it is for me to get my chest nice and wide. So I just use the blocks. So we'll come into that transition into triangle pose. So you're going to inhale here, wait for the exhale, and then move into triangle pose. I'm just holding this first one, not being in any rush to move back to that lunge. And again, if you find yourself that you're moving before the breath, just take a moment, come back to where you were and try again. That's what our life is really. It's just a series of trial and error Come back into that runner's lunge on an inhale. Runner's lunge. On an exhale, wait for a triangle. On an inhale, runner's lunge. Exhale, triangle. And if it takes you more than one breath to get there, under lunge, inhale, just wait for that exhale before really opening up into your triangle. No big deal. Last one. On your next exhale, hands come down, downward facing dog. William Bridges said, it is when we are in, tra tra in transition that we are most completely alive. Something to think about. Bring that right foot forward. We'll come into crescent lunge. Wait for the inhale. Come up, crescent lunge. This is one I see people going crazy rushing into all the time. So set yourself up, your crescent lunge. Interlaced hands behind you, or you can just leave your hands at the waist, that's fine. So 
So you can probably guess what's coming next. I'm just going to scoot back a little bit. On an inhale, you're going to lift your chest open. You're going to wait for your exhale and come into warrior three. Taking your time to land in your warrior three. So the transition is where we feel most alive, so we're going to work on our transition. So as we inhale here, open your chest. Exhale, step back into that crescent lunge. Inhale, open your chest. Wait for the exhale, warrior three. Taking your time to land when you get there. Take two more of those transitions on your own. And like anything in life, sometimes things can get a little hairy. Maybe your right glute is burning. And release those arms. Bring your hands to your waist. Straighten the legs. Parallel the feet. And we'll switch sides. So moving into the other side, left side crescent lunge. And in your left lunge, your hands can be at your waist or you can interlace. If the hands are interlaced, just take the opposite finger on top, the strange finger on top. Inhale, open up the chest. Let's not waste any time. Exhale, land in your warrior three. Just wait for that exhale before you move into it. Take time to land once you're there. Enjoy the ride. Breathe while you're there. Wait for the exhale, and then move back into crescent lunge. So leading with the breath and not the body. Very hard. Let's do that three more times. Take time to land. On your exhale, floating through space. Knowing there's going to be little road bumps along the way. And on your next exhale, downward facing dog. And notice you're facing the other way. If you really don't like facing this way, you can just turn your body to face the original way you were facing. Downward facing dog. Bring the knees down, child's pose, balasana. Sit it back. Your life is a story of transition. You are always leaving one chapter behind while moving on to the next. That's from an unknown author. So what we want to do is always make sure that we are living this life mindfully. Our life is a story of transition, so we want to make that mindful in our life and our yoga practice. Coming up onto hands and knees, downward facing dog. And on an exhale, walking your hands toward the feet, Uttanasana forward bend. Exhale, allow your spine to drape. Bring your hands to your waist. Wait for the inhale. Come up to stand. 
and we'll come into chair pose. Utkatasana, and this is one I see people just bam, rushing into. So take a moment, set up your feet, spread your toes. On an inhale, sitting it back down. So waiting for the inhale, and then sitting back down into your chair pose. And sometimes it's nice to kind of wiggle your hips side to side to really get yourself nestled in there. A little drawing into the belly. And we'll take a chair twist. So you guessed it, you're gonna wait for your exhale. Bring your right hand to your right waist. Exhale, then start to twist. And if you run out of breath, just take another inhale. Then twist. And maybe you're right here. Maybe just your forearm is over your knee. Being mindful to scoot your left hip back, keep your knees balanced. I like to just keep my gaze, my gaze down. If you want it a little bit more, on an exhale, of course, you could take your hands in prayer, wait for the exhale, and then open up. And last inhale. Wait for the exhale, then fold. Uttanasana. On an inhale, hands to waist, rise up to stand. Just take a moment to feel that twist and what it did on that side. Wait for your inhale, we'll take the twist on the other side. Utkatasana, chair pose. I like to place my hand on my belly just to draw it in. Sit back a little deeper, toes spread wide. Exhale, then left hand to left waist, starting to twist. Noticing your knees, tendency is to have the right knee way forward, scoot it back, hips balanced. If you're going to come into the chair pose, which there's no urgency to do so, make sure you do it on an exhale. And if it takes more than one breath, wait for the next exhale. And you may actually find that you get even deeper into the poses because you're taking more mindful, deeper breaths. Next exhale, fold Uttanasana. your hands to your waist, wait for the inhale, coming up to stand. So one more standing sequence and then we'll take it down to the floor. Thank you for hanging in there by the way. So I'm going to go to the top of my mat and I'm going to come into Rikshasana tree pose. So I'm going to bring my left foot up for this one. And that was my bad. I went into it without even thinking about it, without breathing. So I'm going to come back down. <sighs> Wait for my breath and then come up. So taking a moment to breathe in your tree pose. I practice this all the time and I still lead with my body sometimes instead of leading with my breath, then my body. <sighs> it's a practice of self-love and awakening for sure. We're gonna wait for your next exhale. Hands to waist, we're gonna step it back into a wide-legged position and coming into temple pose. So heels in, toes out. Just starting by moving side to side, getting your body used to this position. And this may be plenty for you right now. If you need a little bit more or want a little bit more fire, 
you're going to take your uh, right elbow on top of your left, take eagle arms, and on an exhale, you'll fold into that temple. Remember, the most advanced yogis are not the pretzels. They are the ones that breathe and remember to breathe. So really take a moment to land. There's nowhere to go. Just enjoying the pose where you are. Wait for your inhale. Come up to stand. Release those arms. Come back to the top of the mat. Standing in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Tree on the other side. So right leg. Wait for your breath. Right leg comes up. Take a moment to get grounded in tree. Hmm. I'm just feeling the lovely effects of that heat sort of rising up. And just noticing if you feel any different than you would from your regular yoga practice. This is something you can do at any time. You may go faster or slower than the teacher. It's just something to constantly be practicing. So waiting for your exhale. And then coming back into that wide-legged position. So temple pose, and I'm just going to face you. Temple pose. And if you need something a little bit more, just take the opposite arm on top. Wait for your exhale and fold. One of my favorite quotes, it says, when shifts and transitions shake you to the core, see that as a sign of greatness that's about to occur. So if you're really sweating, if things are starting to burn, maybe that means you're about to feel some bliss, feel some real, true relaxation. I hope so. Next inhale, come up to stand, unwind those arms. Come back to the front of your mat. Breathe. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, leg part. Halfway forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Step it back, plank, top of a push-up. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin. Coming through cobra, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Coming down to child's pose. So while you're in your child's pose, just think of something, maybe a stressful transition that's in your life. Stay in child's pose with the forehead facing down. Maybe think of something a little stressful. So one of the things that always stressed me out was coming from work to home. So maybe that's a stress for you. Or maybe you get stressed when you wake up. You see your mind starts racing as soon as you wake up. And just think, the next time I do that, think how can I breathe that will make that transition less stressful. So in a moment we'll practice some mantra, but just think about a transition, a daily one. And again, it could be something small or it could be something huge. How can you breathe in a way that before you react or before you greet the situation, how can you breathe that's going to help you handle it better with more clarity? Inhale. 
And let's come up onto hands and knees, coming into pigeon pose on the right side. So the right knee comes forward, stretch the left leg back. If you need to grab a blanket or a block for underneath your right hip, that can be really nice. So staying upright to start, and I think you know where we're going with this, take a couple breaths. And then before you lower, wait for your exhale and then lower. And see, I just started before my exhale. So if that happens at any time, just try again. You can rest your head all the way down to the floor. You can rest your hands up on your fists or on a block. And I just like to give you some options of some mantra that you can say with your breath to help you with transitions, to help you relax. So one of the things I like to do is I like to breathe in all, exhale say in my head is well, inhale all, exhale is well. So maybe that resonates with you. Maybe you breathe in I, Exhale, am safe, or I am enough, or just something simple like inhale and let, exhale, go. So finding a mantra that works with your breath, one that resonates with you. We all have so much innate wisdom within us. It's just finding that, fine-tuning it, becoming aware of it, practicing using it. Coming out of your pigeon, so transitioning, so waiting for the exhale. Coming out of there, take your time. Maybe it takes you longer than someone else, no big deal. Releasing that right hip somehow, so maybe you come in down dog, stretching the leg up, or maybe you just stretch your right leg back. Transitioning onto our left side pigeon, so wait for your exhale. Left knee comes forward. Taking your time, if you need a prop for underneath, the left hip, take the time to do that. Wait for your exhale, breath leads, body follows. Finding a breath mantra that works for you, so maybe it's something simple like let on the inhale, go on the exhale. Retraining our minds how to see things. George Bernard Shaw said, Progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So we're never going to change all the clutter that's in our mind, all the talk and chatter. What we can do is we can refocus. We can focus on the breath. We can come back to that breath.
and thinking about your transition as being just as important as pigeon the transition out. So wait for your exhale. Slowly coming out of your pigeon. Take your time. Stretch that left leg back, maybe in a down dog with the left leg up. Or maybe just on your knees, stretching the left leg back. And then just come to sit on your heels, close the eyes. Blinking the eyes open, and we'll make our way onto our backs. And we'll move mindfully so we don't want to rush to get there. So we'll take it vertebrae by vertebrae, coming down to lying down. Savoring the fact that we're coming to a lying down position. Knees into chest on an exhale. Apanasana. And we'll come into that spinal twist just as we began, but without the movement. So arms come out into a T. This time, of course, you know to wait for the exhale. Drop the knees over to the left. If this is way too much, too deep of a twist, you can take a block or a blanket in between the thighs. Maybe you liked that mantra we worked on in Pigeon, so maybe you inhale, let. Exhale, go. Before you come back to the center, wait for your inhale. Bring the knees up. You know what's coming, just wait for the exhale and drop the knees over to the other side. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Waiting for your inhale to bring the knees up. Maybe you stay here and just massage the lower back. Maybe you take the knees wide, reach for the shins or the ankles. If you really like happy baby, you can do that. But I often find it's just as relaxing just to take the knees apart and grab the ankles or the shins. If there's anything else that you need to do for Shavasana, you can do that. Otherwise, stretching into Shavasana. So this is the best tr tr transition of all. Stretching the legs long. Take your time to get into it. So if you feel some tweakiness in your lower back, maybe you roll up your blanket and just place a little elevation under your knees. If you need something to cover your eyes, maybe you do that. 
finding a good spot for your hands. So maybe it feels comforting to place a hand on the belly, a hand on the heart, both hands on the heart. Just find a place that feels good. And letting go of your breath, there's nowhere to be but here and now. Allowing your body to heal. Melting your body into the floor. The poses, the transitions are all like medicine. And we're allowing that medicine to work into every fiber of our being. Taking rest, Shavasana.
to deepen your breath. your body that in just a moment it's time to move. Giving it time to transition. And then just start to bring your thumbs to each, the finger pad of your thumbs to each finger pad. Wiggling your toes. Maybe stretching out your jaw. Your lips. Reaching your arms up and over. Exhale, then roll to the right side. Hang out here for some breaths. Keep the eyes closed. Dennis Waitley said, change the changeable, accept the unchangeable, and remove yourself from the unacceptable. Change the changeable, accept the unchangeable, and remove yourself from the unacceptable. Using the strength of your arms, pressing yourself up to a seated position. Closing the eyes. Come back to that breath mantra. Whatever resonated with you, inhale. Just knowing that with every transition in your life, big or small, you have a chance to breathe. Let your breath be your guide and then let your body and your mind follow. This amazing tool is available to you at all times. Bring your hands to your heart center. Feeling in your practice. Thumbs to your third eye. Wait for the exhale and bow. Namaste. Thank you so much.